Lee Chaucer. Edited by D. Lang Purvase. This reading is based on the book The Canterbury Tales and Other Poems. The original text contains poems by Chaucer and a lot of notes and explanations by the editor. To view these, please click on the Gutenberg e-text link on the LibriVox catalog page of the Canterbury Tales. The Second Nun's Tale The minister in Norris unto vices, which that men call an English idleness. The porter at the gate is of delices, to a shoe, and by her contraire her oppress, that is to say by lawful business. Well ought we to do all our intent, lest that the fiend through idleness us hent. For he, that with his thousand cordes sly, continually us waiteth to be clap, when he may man in idleness espy, he can so lightly catch him in his trap, till that a man be hent right by the lap, he is not where the fiend hath him in hand. Well ought we work, and idleness withstand. And though men dreaded never for to die, yet see men well by reason doubtless, that idleness is root of sluggardy, of that there cometh never good increase, and see that sloth them holdeth in a lace, only to sleep, and for to eat and drink, and to devour in all that others swink, and for to put us from such idleness, that cause is of so great confusion. I have here done my faithful business, after the legend, in translation, right of thy glorious life and passion. Thou with thy garland wrought of rose and lily, thee mean I, maid and martyr, Saint Cecilie. And thou, thou art the flower of virgins all, of whom that Bernard list so well to write. To thee at my beginning first I call, thou comfort of us wretches, do me indite thy maiden's death, that won through her merit, the eternal life, and o'er the fiend victory, as man may after readen in her story. Thou maid and mother, daughter of thy son, thou well of mercy, sinful soul's cure, in whom that God of bounty chose to one, thou humble and high o'er every creature, though noblest, so far forth our nature, that no disdain the maker had of kind, his son in blood and flesh to clothe and wind. Within the cloister of thy blissful sides took man's shape, the eternal love and peace, that of the trine compass, Lord, and guide, is whom earth and sea and heaven out of release. I, Harry, and thou virgin Wemelus, bare of thy body, and dweltest maiden pure, the creator of every creature. Assembled is in thee magnificence, with mercy, goodness, and with such pity, that thou, that art the son of excellence, not only helpest them that pray to thee, but oftentime, of thy benignity, full freely, ere that men thy help beseech, thou ghost before, and art thy livers leech. Now help, thou meek and blissful fair maid, me flemed wretch in this desert of Gaul. Think on the woman, Kanani that said that Welpus eat some of the crumbs all, that from their lord's table by a fall, and though that I, unworthy son of Eve, be sinful, yet accept my belief. And for that faith is dead without to work is, for to work a give me wit and space, that I be quit from then is that most dirk is. O thou, that art so fair and full of grace, be thou mine advocate in that high place, whereas without an end is sung, O Sana, thou Christ's mother, daughter, dear of Anne. And of thy light my soul in prison light, that troubled is by the contagion of my body, and also by the weight of earthly lust and false affection, O heaven of refuge, O salvation of them that be in sorrow and distress. Now help, for to my work I will me dress. Yet pray I you, that reader what I write, Forgive me that I do no diligence, This ilka story subtilly to indite. For both have I the wordes and sentence Of him that at the saint's reverence The story wrote, and follow her legend, And pray you that you will my work amend. 
First will I you the name of St. Cecilie expound, as men may in her story see. It is to say in English, heaven's lily, for pure chasteness of virginity, or for she whiteness had of honesty, and green of conscience, and of good fame the sweetest savour lily was her name. Or Sicily is to say the way of blind, for she example was by good teaching, or else Sicily, as I written find, is joined by a manner conjoining of heaven and Leah, and herein figuring the heaven is set for thought of holiness, and Leah for her lasting business. Sicily may eke be said in this manner, wanting of blindness, for her great delight of sapience, and for her thuis clear, or Ellis, lo, this maiden's name bright of heaven and Leo's comes, for which by right men might her well the heaven of people call, example of good and wise work as all. For Leo's people in English is to say, and right as men may in the heaven see, the sun and moon and star is every way, right so men ghostily in this maiden free, so when of faith the magnanimity, and eke the clearness whole of sapience, and sundry workers bright of excellence. And right so as these philosophers write, that heaven is swift and round and eke burning, right so was fair Cecily the white, full swift and busy in every good working, and round and whole in good preserving, and burning ever in charity full bright, now have I you declared what she height. This maiden bright Cecile, as her life saith, was come of Romans, and of noble kind, and from her cradle fostered in the faith of Christ, and bare his gospel in her mind. She never ceased, as I written find, of her prayer, and God to love and dread, beseeching him to keep her maidenhead. And when this maiden should unto a man a wedded be, that was full young of age, which that it called was Valerian, and come was the day of marriage, she, full devout and humble in her courage, under her robe of gold that sat full fair, had next her flesh it clad her in an hair. And while the organs made melody, to God alone thus in her heart sang she, O Lord, my soul and eke my body gee, unwemmed, lest that I confounded be. And for his love that died upon the tree, every second or third day she fast, I bidding in her orisons full fast. The night came, and to bed must she gone with her husband, as it is the manner. And privily she said to him anon, O sweet and well-beloved spouse, dear, there is a counsel, and ye will hear it, which that right fain I would unto you say, so that ye swear ye will not be ray. Valerian gan fast unto her swear, that for no case nor thing that might a be, he never should to none be ray in her, and then at erst thus to make him say to she, I have an angel which that loveth me, that with great love, whether I wake or sleep, is ready I my body for to keep. And if that he may feel in out of dread, that ye may touch or love in villainy, he right anon will slay you with the deed, and in your youth thus ye shall to die. And if that ye in cleaner love me guy, he will you love as me, for your cleanness, and show to you his joy and his brightness. Valerian, corrected as God would, answered again, If I shall trust to thee, let me that angel see, and him behold, and if that is a very angel be, then will I do as thou hast prayed me. And if that it a very angel be, then will I do as thou hast prayest me. And if thou love another man, forsooth, write with this sword, then will I slay you both. Cecily answered anon, right in this wise, If that you list, the angel shall ye see, so that ye trow of Christ, and you baptize. Go forth to Via Appia, quoth she that from this town a stands but miles three, and to the poorer folkas that there dwell, say them right thus, as that I shall you tell. Tell them that I, Cecile, you to them sent, to show you the good urban the old, for secret need is and for good intent, 
and when that ye Saint Urban have behold, tell him the wordes which I to you told, and when that he hath purged from you sin, then shall ye see the angel ere ye twin. Valerian is to the place gone, and right as he was taught by her learning, he found this holy old Urban anon, among the saintes burials louding, and he anon without a tarrying, did his message, and when that he it told, Urban for joy his hand is gan uphold, the tear is from his eye and let he fall, Almighty Lord, O Jesus Christ, quoth he, sower of chaste counsel, heard of us all, the fruit of thilke seed of chastity, that thou hast sown in Sicily, take to thee, lo, like a busy bee, without a guile, thee serveth I thine own enthrall, Sicily. For Thilka's spouse, that she took but now, full like a fierce lion she sendeth here, as meek as ear was any lamb to owe. And with that word anon there gan appear an old man, clad in white clothes clear, that had a book with letters of golden hand, and gan before Valerian to stand. Valerian, as dead, fell down for dread, when he him saw, and he up hent him though, and on his book right thus he gan to read. One Lord, one faith, one God without a mo, one Christian drum, one Father of all also, above and all, and over all, everywhere. These words all with gold are written were. When this was read, then said this old man, Believest thou this, or no, say yea or nay? I believe all this, quoth Valerian. For soother thing than this I dare well say, Under the heaven no wight think a may. Then vanished the old man, he wist not where, And Pope Urban him christened him right there. Valerian went home, and found Sicily, Within his chamber with an angel stand. This angel had of roses and of lily, Coronas too, the which he bare in hand. And first to Cecile, as I understand, he gave the one, And after again he take the other to Valerian her make. With body clean, and with unwemmed thought, Keep I well these coronas too, quoth he. From paradise to you I have them brought, Nor ever more shall they rotten be, Nor lose their sweet savour, trust of me. Nor ever white shall see them with his eye, But he be chaste, and hate villainy. And thou, Valerian, for thou so soon assented hast to good counsel, Also say what thee list, and thou shalt have thy boon. I have a brother, quoth Valerian, though, That in this world I love no man so. I pray you that my brother may have grace, To know the truth, as I do in this place. The angel said, God liketh thy request, And botha with the palm of martyrdom, Ye shall a come unto this blissful rest. And with that word Tiburs his brother came, And when that he the savour under nomen, Which that the roses and the lilies cast, Within his heart he gan to wonder fast, And said, I wonder, this time of the year, Whence that sweet a savour cometh so, Of rose and lilies, that I smell a here. For though I had them in mine hand as too, The savour might in me no deeper go. The sweeter smell, that in my heart I find, hath changed me all in another kind. Valerian said, Two crowners here have we, snow-white and rose-red, that shine clear, which that thine eyen have no might to see. And as thou smellest them through my prayer, so shalt thou see them. Levy, brother dear, if it so be thou wilt without a sloth believe aright, and know the very troth. Tiburcia answered, Sayest thou this to me, in soothness, or in dreama hear I this? In dreamus, quote Valerian, Have we be unto this time, brother mine, a wise, but now, at erst in truth our dwelling is. How knowst thou this, quoth Tiburce, in what wise? Quoth Valerian, that shall I thee devise. The angel of God hath me the truth it taught, which thou shalt see, if thou wilt renny the idols, and be clean in Ella's knot. And of the miracle of these crowners, Twa St. Ambrose in his preface list to say, 
solemnly this noble doctor, dear, commandeth it, and saith in this manner, The palm of martyrdom for to receive, St. Sicily, fulfilled of God's gift, the world in eke her chamber gan to wave. Witness Tiburcis and Sicily's shrift, to which God of his bounty would a shift coronas too, of flowers well smelling, and made his angel them the crowners bring. The maid hath brought these men to bliss above, the world hath wist what it is worth, certain, devotion of chastity to love. Then showed him Sicily all open and plain, that idols all are but a thing in vain, for they be dumb, and thereto they be deave, and charge him with his idols for to leave. Whoso that troweth not this, a beast he is, quoth this triburse, if that I shall not lie. And she gan kiss his breast when she heard this, and was full glad he could the truth espy. This day I take thee for mine ally, said this blessful fairer maiden dear, and after that she said as ye may hear. Lo, right so as the love of Christ, quoth she, made me thy brother's wife, right in that wise anon for mine ally here take I thee. Since that thou wilt thine idol is despise, go with thy brother now, and thee baptize, and make thee clean, so that thou mayst behold the angel's face, of which thy brother told. Tiburce answered, and said, uh, Brother dear, first tell me whither I shall, and to what man. To whom, quoth he, come forth with good a cheer, I will thee lead unto the Pope Urban. To Urban, brother mine, Valerian, quoth then Tiburce, wilt thou me thither lead? Methinketh that it were a wondrous deed. Meanest not that urban, quoth he, though, that is so often damned to be dead, and wands and halcus always to and fro, and dare not one as put a forth his head. Men should him brennen in a fire so red, if he were found, or if men might him spy, and us also to bear him company. And while we seek of that divinity that is a hid in heaven privily, Algate burnt in this world should we be. To whom Sicilily answered boldly, Men might a dread a well and skilfully, This life to lose mine own dearer brother, If this were living only and none other. But there is a better life in other place, That never shall be lost a dread thee not, Which God as son us told a through his grace, That father's son which all a thing has wrought, And all that wrought is with a skilful thought. The ghost that from the father gan proceed, Hath solid them without in any dread. By word and by miracle, High God's Son, When he was in this world, declared here, That there is other life where men may one. To whom answered Tiburce, O sister dear, Saidest thou not right now in this manner, There was but one God, Lord in soothfastness, And now of three how mayst thou bear witness? That I shall tell, quoth she, ere I go. Right as a man hath sapiences three, Memory, engine, and intellect also, So in one being of divinity Three persons there may a right well be. Then gan she him full busily to preach Of Christ's coming and his pain is to teach, And many pointers of his passion, How God's Son in this world was withhold To do mankind a plain remission that was a bound in sin and care is cold. All this thing she unto Tiburce told, and after that Tiburce, in good intent, with Valerian to Pope Urban he went. That thanked God, and with glad heart and light, he christened him, and made him in that place, perfect in his learning, and God as night. And after this Tiburce got such grace, that every day he saw in time and space the angel of God, and every manner boon that be God asked, it was sped full anon. It were full hard by order for to sain, How many wonders Jesus for them wrought, But at the last, to tell a short and plain, The sergeants of the town of Rome them sought, And them before all much the prefect brought, Which them opposed, and knew all their intent, And to the image of Jupiter them sent, And said, Whoso will not do sacrifice, Swap off his head, this is my sentence here. Anon these martyrs that I you devise, One Maximus, that was an officer, Of the prefix, and his corner colleri, them hent. And when he forth the saint is lad, 
himself he wept for pity that he had. When Maximus had heard the saint's lore, he got him of the tournamentores leave, and led them to his house without a more, and with their preaching, ere that it were eve, they gone in from the tormentors to reeve, and from Maxim and from his folk which one, the false faith to trow in God alone. Cecilia came, when it was waxen night, with priestess that them christened all in fear, and afterward, when day was waxen light, Cecile them said with a steadfast cheer, Now, Christus own a knight's lefa, and dear, cast all away the workers of darkness, and armor you in armor of brightness. Ye have forsooth it done a great battle. Your course is done, your faith have ye conserved. O oh, to the crown of life that may not fail, the rightful judge which that ye have served shall give it to you as ye have it deserved. And when this thing was said as I devise, men led them forth to do the sacrifice. But when they were unto the place it brought, to tell us shortly the conclusion, they would incense nor sacrifice right not, but on their knees they set a them adown, with humble heart and sad devotion, and lost of both their heads in the place their souls went to the king of grace. This Maximus that saw this thing betide, with piteous tears told it anon right, that he their souls saw to heaven glide, with angels full of clearness and of light, and with his word converted many a white, for which Almachius did him to beat, with whip of lead till he his life gan leet. Cecile him took, and buried him anon, by Tiburs and Valerian softly, within their burying place under the stone. And after this Almachius hastily bade his ministers fetch an openly Cecile, so that she might in his presence do sacrifice in Jupiter incense. But they, converted at her wise allure, wept a full sore, and gave full credence unto her word, and cried more and more, Christ, Goda's son, without a difference, is very God, this is all our sentence, that hath so good a servant him to serve, thus with one voice we trow, though we sterve. Almachius, that heard of this doing, bade fetch Cecilia, that he might her see, and Alder first, lo, this was his asking. What manner of woman art thou? quoth he. I am a gentle woman born, quoth she. I ask of thee, quoth he, though it thee grieve, of thy religion and of thy belief. Ye have begun your question foolishly, quoth she, that wouldest two answers conclude in one demand? Ye ask lewdly. Almach answered to that similitude, Of whence comes thine answering so rude? Of whence? quoth she, when that she was framed, of conscious, and of good faith unfeigned. Almachius said, uh, Takest thou no heed of my power? And she him answered this, Your might, quoth she, full little is to dread, for every mortal manna's power is but like a bladder full of wind iwise. For with a needle's point, when it is blow, may all the boast of it be laid full low. Full wrongfully begunnest thou, quoth he, and yet in wrong is thy perseverance. Knowst thou not how our mighty princes free have thus commanded and made ordinance, that every Christian white shall have penance? But if that he his Christendom with say, and go all quit, if he will it rene. Your princes Aaron, as do your nobly doth, quoth then Cecile, and with a wood sentence, yet make us guilty, and it is not sooth. For ye that know a well our innocence, for as much as we do I reverence to Christ, and for we bear a Christian name, yet put on us a crime and eke a blame. But we that know Thilke name so for virtuous, we may it not with say, Almach answered, choose one of these two, do sacrifice, or Christendom rene, that thou mayest now escape by that way. At which the holy blissful Pharaoh made, Gan for to laugh, and to the judge said, O judge, confused in thy nicety, Wouldest thou that I renie innocence? To make me a wicked wight, quoth she. Lo, he dissimileth here in audience, He stareth, and woodeth in his advertence. To whom Almachius said, 
unseely wretch, know thou not how far my might may stretch? Have not our mighty princes to me given ye both power and eke authority, to make folk to die in or to live in? Why speakest thou so proudly then to me? I speak not but steadfastly, quoth she. Not proudly, for I say as for my side, we hate deadly thilk a vice of pride. And if thou dread and not sooth to hear, then will I show all openly by right, that thou hast made a full great leasing here. Thou sayest thy princes have thee given might, both for to slay and for to quick a white. Thou that mayest not but only life bereave, thou hast none a other power nor no leave. But thou mayest say, the princes have thee make it, minister of death, for if thou speakest of mo, thou liest, for thy power is full of naked. Do away thy boldness, said Almachius, though, and sacrifice to our gods ere thou go. I reckon not what wrong that thou me proffer, for I can suffer it as a philosopher. But these wrongers may I not endure, that thou speakest of our goddess here, quoth he. Cecile answered, O nice a creature, thou saidest no word, since thou spake it to me, that I knew not therewith thy nicety, and that thou wert in every manner wiser, a lewd officer, a vain justice. There lacketh nothing to thine outward iron, that thou art blind, for thing that we see all that it is stona, that men may well espyin, that ilka stone a god thou wilt it call. I read it thee, let thine hand upon it fall, and taste it well, and stona thou shalt it find, since that thou seest not with thine iron blind. It is a shame that the people shall so scorn thee, and laugh at thy folly, for commonly men wot it well over all, that mighty God is in his heaven high, and these images well mayst thou espy, to thee nor to themselves may not profite, for in effect they be not worth a mitre. These worders and such others say to she, and he waxed wroth, and bade a man should her lead home to her house, and in her house, quoth he, burn her right in a bath with flame as red, and as he bade her, right so was done the deed. For in a bath they gan her fast a shetin, And night and day great fire they under betin. The long a night, and eke a day also, For all the fire, and eke of the bath is heat, She sat all cold, and felt of it no woe, It made her not one drop of for to sweat, But in that bath her life she must let a, For he, Alamachius, with full wick intent To slay her in the bath his son descent. Three strokes in the neck he smote to her, though. The tormentor, but for no manner chance, He might not smite to her fair a neck in two. And for there was that time an ordinance, That no man should do man such penance. The fourth a stroke to smite, soft or sore, This tormentor he durst to do no more. But half dead, with her neck a carven, There he let her lie, and on his way is went. The Christian folk, which that about her were, with Sheetas have the blood full fair e hent. Three days lived she in this torment, And never ceased them the faith to teach, That she had fostered them, she gan to preach. And them she gave her meblis and her thing, And to the Pope Urban betook them though, And said, I ask of this of heaven's king, To have respite three days and no more, To recommend to you, ere that I go, These solas low, and that I might do worch, here of mine house perpetually a church. St. Urban with his deacons privily the body fetched, and buried it by night among his other saintes honestly. Her house the church of St. Sicilily hight, St. Urban hallowed it, as he well might, in which unto this day, in noble wise, men do to Christ and to his saint service. End of the Second Nun's Tale